Hey guys, Kevin Inoue here again from Fight Designer LLC. Uh, as a follow-up to a question on the last video that I had about uh, switchblades and balasongs, uh, someone was asking about how to blunt blades uh, from a props artisan's perspective. When you, when you have to buy a, a blade that is sharp and you need to blunt it down so that uh, an actor is safe using it. So, uh, congratulations, you'll get to get a tour of my, uh, well not a tour, you'll get to see a little bit in the background of my really messy scene shot. Uh, and I'll show you how I blunt down a, a stainless steel knife and uh, a similar process on a carbon steel sword. They're a little different, but not that much. Um, the main difference is carbon steel is softer. So theoretically, yes, I could file out the burrs first with a, a carbon steel sword um, and just do it with a, a large hand file. It takes a lot longer though, and I'm kind of lazy. I've got power tools, why would I do that? Um, unless I need to in the moment on set or something. Um, but the other thing is that carbon steel is tempered, whereas the, the cheaper stainless steel blades are pretty much homogenous. Uh, and, and they don't need to worry as much about overheating. So uh, with the carbon steel, I need to be a little bit more careful about slow passes, some time between not staying in one area too long with an angle grinder or a belt sander because I don't want it to overheat. Um, whereas stainless steel, I'm gonna be a little less worried about that. Um, obviously use uh, safety precautions, follow OSHA guidelines as best you can. Uh, wear eye protection. I had a little sliver of aluminum going to my eye at one point last year when I was doing something and just, I was like, oh, it's just a quick and easy thing. I won't have to take time. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Uh, a couple days later, it finally came out, and I was like, oh, that's a little, that's a, a little, a uh, couple millimeter long sliver of aluminum that probably came off of one of my power tools. Uh, I think it was dremeling at that time, but still, point taken. Uh, and a strong belt sander can launch a blade across the room if you're not careful. So uh, follow all those precautions. I I do tend to avoid gloves though, again because I often work with with uh, carbon steel and I want to make sure it's not overheating. If I'm holding the blade, if it gets at all uncomfortable to hold, that tells me I need to just stop. Sometimes I'll, I'll uh, you know, if I'm in a rush, I'll have some water. I can dip it in to cool it off real quick too, and then go back. But for the most part, if it gets too hot to hold, you don't want to hold it. And I like that extra control. So I'll kind of walk you through my process, which is angle grinder, rough, slow belt sander, faster, finer belt sander, and a little bit of finishing with uh, some fine grit metal sandpaper. Um, and that's, uh, that's how it goes. So, let me take you over to the shop. Hey, welcome to the mess that is my shop. Um, so, in response to some questions, we're going to be showing how we blunt down some of these... Uh, whoop, whoop, that is my cameras. How to blunt down some blades. So, uh, as I uh, talked about in some previous videos, we got some of these uh, sort of pseudo switch blades. I uh, recently got these. Some of these are, are still pretty darn sharp, right? I mean, that's a sharp blade. So this is not something we would ever want an actor to have to handle uh, unless there was a very specific need to do something like, uh, you know, have an establishing shot in film where they were doing something like that. Um, but for the most part, we don't want to give actors sharp blades. That's just asking for trouble. Uh, assume that your talent are idiots and plan accordingly. And you will rarely be disappointed one way or another. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mount this in a bench vise. Now, as many knives are, these are uh, stainless steel blades. Um, and stainless steel is hard, but a little bit more brittle, so we tend to not have them for sword blades. But knife blades, we do tend to get a lot of these, these cheap stainless steel ones. I'm trying out my GoPro here, we'll see how this goes. Um, so things like filing tend to not work as well. Grinding works just fine, though. So what I've got here is just your standard angle grinder. So I'm just going to go nice and slow along the edge here. Um, I don't have to worry too much about uh, interfering with the temper on a stainless steel blade the way I might on a carbon steel blade. But I don't know if you can see here, this is this is a nice thin edge, so I don't see any light really reflecting off of it. But after a couple passes, I will. I love these guides here. Sometimes I'll, I'll put that along the edge of the, the blade here, if I've got a longer blade especially. But I like to just be able to put my finger along that also to help guide it with a second hand. This this kind of thing just doesn't work as well for me when, uh, when I'm trying to do neat grinds like this.
I am making long passes, ideally the whole length of the blade each time, just so I don't have weird marks in the middle. And that does the bulk of the job, but now what we've got is a rough kind of squared off edge. You can see it is reflecting light, so it's got that flat surface. Um, but there's a little bit of, of uh, like almost burrs kind of going off the edge here, so it's kind of got corners. It's kind of more squared than round. I don't like squared. I wouldn't want to hand this to an actor yet either. I do not think this is ready, although I have been handed blades there in this kind of shape. Uh, I don't think that's ideal. So next I'm going to take this over to my uh, sort of rough belt sander, and then I'll go to a finer belt sander. So we'll start with the rough one, just a quick pass here. That's really for deburring as much as anything, but uh, you'll notice I do this kind of like wiggle thing with it. Uh, I do like to kind of wiggle them as I go across the belt um, because then I get some different angles and it, it makes a round edge. Again, I don't want a square edge because a square edge has, uh, has sharp corners. And the whole point here is to avoid anything sharp, right? So I'm gonna finish off on a finer, belt, finer faster belt here. So that's not much more comfortable. Um, but I said finish, I lied, I actually do like to take one last pass here, and that is just with some um, fine grit sandpaper. I'll get back over here with this one. So now I'm just gonna take whatever I have handy, really anywhere from like 300 to, to 800 is fine. This is probably a little finer than I need, this is 800. Um, and I'm just gonna basically polish the edge because I do want it to be smooth. The whole point here is that it won't have uncomfortable friction or any burrs or anything like that. I mean, the, the belt sander should have taken care of any of the burrs. So this is really just polishing, just so that it is a, a smooth edge that slides easily. Because that is our goal, is that should you have an actor slide this across their hand, slide across their wrist, whatever, it'll just not slide nice and smoothly and easily, and, uh, and we'll be safe. Right? That's what we want. So a nice, smooth, somewhat rounded edge and a rounded point. Now, again, this, this is what I would call kind of movie sharp or movie blunt, rather. So if this is not anywhere near as dull as a stage combat training blade, aluminum blade, I mean, this thing is, the edge is thicker than the entire blade on the other. So obviously there's gonna be a, a difference in how safe these are. Um, this one is designed so that it, it will not puncture if you accidentally do something like that. This one might. Um, you know, it's it, yeah, it's like the tine of a fork, right? So, as in the, the previous video, it's not super safe, it's not idiot-proof, but it is now also not sharp or uncomfortable to do something like that with, which is what we want. Now, when you have a, a larger blade, like a sword, uh, and these tend to also be uh, carbon steel, which is a little bit softer. This one was not actually sharp to begin with, or it is not now, but it, it has some dings in it, so I'm going to basically treat it the same way. Put it in my vise, somewhat padded, edge sticking up, and I'm just going to give it a nice long pass with my angle grinder here to help clean this edge up a little bit. And yeah, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I am using the uh, the edge of this guide pressed up against the uh, the blade here to help me keep that nice, straight, even line without putting scratches on the, the flat of the blade. Uh, nice long passes is ideally what we want. I'm going to finish up the same way on a belt sander.
you'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. Uh, ideally, this should never get too hot to where it's uncomfortable to touch, and that's part of why I like to not wear gloves, is so I can tell if it's getting too hot, because I don't want to ruin the temper on the blade. Um, but uh, also just because I like that sensitivity. Yeah, as you can see, this does throw some sparks, so just uh, think about where those are heading. Be safe. You might be able to see I'm not putting this flat on the, the belt much, partly that's because it makes it shudder a lot, uh, but also what I really want to do is, is get the diagonals so that the, uh, the angle grinder might have left a little rough. Finishing up on the final belt. And then especially because you might have some, uh, you know, metal particles and stuff, I think that this can be a, a good time to not just wipe off, but also give a little oil on these blades, just because they're more likely to rust when they're kind of seeded with metal dust, right? And that's just bait for rust. So a little bit of oil before we pack them up. 
So hopefully that answers your questions. Um, I've still got my goggle marks on my head here. Uh, but as always, if you've got any uh, follow-up questions or comments, concerns, whatever, uh, you can always ask me below or shoot me an email or something on the website. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to help. Uh, if there's anything that... I feel short here. There we go. If there's anything that any of you need uh, to help you get through this time of uh, houses being canceled, uh, closed, theaters closed, production houses, um, shut down movie production, uh, uh, higher education being online only. Um, it's a bit of an echo chamber and it's, it's a little, uh, disheartening, but, um, it can on the plus side, give you some more time to mess with some of these props projects or clean up your blades or, or do that kind of maintenance. So if you have any questions, shoot them my way. If you, uh, if you want to chat, let me know. Um, I can do stuff via zoom or Skype or, or FaceTime. Um, if you're, uh, if you've got a class that you're doing virtually and you're trying to figure out, you know, guest artists or something like that. Um, or if you have other questions about theatrical firearms or blades or stage combat or any of that. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to take a quick second also to plug my book that's coming out. The, uh, screen combat handbook is sort of a follow up in the same series of the theatrical firearms handbook, which came out in 2014 covering theater and film stuff with prop guns. The stage combat handbook, uh, covers, Everything from, from design, you know, costumes, props, pads, all that kind of stuff, uh, to onset etiquette and protocol, to choreography and coordination, to uh, the mechanics of setting up shots for camera, to uh, acting fight scenes and the specific challenges in that, uh, cinematography, videography concepts as applied to combat scenes, uh, as well as basic editing and more. So uh, if you're looking for some stuff that you can do at home, that should come out, uh, I think, early to mid-May is what uh, what the Rutledge folks are saying. Um, I'll put some links below. Um, and as always, the stuff that I'm working with here is available to rent at Fight Designer LLC. One of your shows do get going again. Uh, if you're in pre-production now, I'm trying to think of stuff, so uh, I'm happy to answer those questions as well. All right, take care, look good, stay safe, have fun, stay sane, stay productive, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.